Hey there everyone, it's Kelly with kellyscards.ca and welcome to this What's in My Stash video. So this is probably one of my most favorite things in my stash. It's my die cutting machine. I have had so many different die cutting machines throughout crafting. It is quite amazing that I have come full circle to literally what I first bought. So I first started out with a big kick the Sizzix Big Kick and that is exactly what this one is here but I've also bought the Big Shot, I've bought Spellbinders, I've bought the Slice I never did do the Cricut, I kinda wasn't impressed with the quick Cricut so I didn't quite go that route and after having the Slice for a little while I kind of didn't care for it so I ended up selling it. I really though did like the Spellbinders machine the only thing is it was limited because you couldn't do the bigger dies and I really wanted to have that opportunity to do both. So recently I also had a Big Shot Plus. It was definitely not a favorite of mine. It was probably one of my worst machines. I didn't like it. It was just too big and I found that it left impressions in my paper. So I ended up getting a Big Kick and again this is full circle. This is pretty much the first machine I had and I'm back to having a Big Kick. Basically it's exactly Exactly like the Big Shot. There is really no difference between this and the Big Shot. The only thing is this is considerably less. A lot of the Michaels are still selling this and again you can get something like this with the coupon for easily under $100. $60, $70, dollars depending where you go you can get this machine. Really love this machine and I'm just going to go through what it comes with. So when I got this machine, I got it with this big platform and basically this big platform, it's really awesome because what Sizzix has done is they create this so that you can use it with many things. So you can see the width of it there and basically with it closed to this level, you can use all your little framelits and all your basically thin dies and that type of thing. If I open it up, this is where basically the width has changed now and now it shows me all the things I can do here. I can do all of these little things. So this is your embossing folders and whatnot, your little clearlets, your embosslets and your sizzlets and basically your textured impressions. Now if I open it one more, then I get all full embossing folders and these these textures which Sizzix sells. Now what's great about this one here is is if you want to do embossing with an embossing folder or with a die this is where you can use it on this setting. And I'll just show you on the first one here. So this will go down first and then you'll have a bottom plate. I also have a extended plate that's bigger but I prefer just using this little small one and I always keep the one on the bottom the same. I never change the top and the bottom and this will help your plates last a lot longer. As soon as this plate is basically gone through the end of its life you can throw it away and then your top plate that you would cut with can become your new bottom and by doing this this will save on a lot of money and a lot of frustration because you'll keep your plates a lot longer. So I'm just going to bring this in. This is the My Favorite Thing Your It Die Tag and really love this tag. I've had this for a while now. I'm just going to run this through here and you can hear it cutting. And once I pull this out, you will be able to see that it die cut this really nice tag. And again, this is through my favorite things. I think they had a stamp set that also went along with this, but I only got the die. Really like the die. And I just find that this setting here works perfect for most of the thin dies. I haven't had to experiment with sandwiches and adding different shims of papers for most of my thin dies like this, even my ones that are open like this, they all seem to work with this setting. I'm just gonna pull this out and I'm gonna go to the last setting here. I'm just gonna bring this embossing folder and this is from Sizzix and this is a Tim Holtz one. 
and I believe I got this last year and I just still love this and I've cut this to be on an A2 size card and I'm just going to put this in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down and open to this flat tab so there's no more layers to peel off of this. This is the one for the embossing folders and I'm going to lay my first plate here then I'm going to put my embossing folder in and then I'm going to lay my last plate on top and this is the sandwich required to emboss and it goes through very easy and I'll just show you the pattern it's really beautiful here look at this pattern and of course there's lots of things you can do you could also ink up on your embossing folder and then it would emboss also with the ink which is really cool but look at that that's really beautiful so love the different options on this machine and really it is this platform that makes all those choices possible so again this is the one that comes with your machine this is the extended multi-purpose platform really love that and I'm just going to show this now this here is the magnetic platform. This is also again through Sizzix and this piece here is basically a big magnet. So as we can see on the picture here, here's my platform. I've got my first plate and my paper and my die and then my final plate on top and basically this is going to help your dies stick so you don't have to tape things down and have them moving around. Now this here is set up only to do the thin die cuts it's not for embossing it's not for the bigger dies I actually don't have any of those big dies but only the thin ones so this is pretty easy you can hear it mag magnetizes itself to the plate and that way you don't have to start taping it down I do find that these will curve and shape especially the bigger ones they are definitely they don't stay straight as you can see there and because of that warpage sometimes you'll put a die on and it'll be a smaller die and it it keeps moving because of the warp in it now there are some people online who say if you put these in the oven and you put something hard on it it will flatten them out but I still love this magnetic platform because it does save a lot on tape. I was taping absolutely everything down if I wanted to run more than one thing through. And this, basically, I don't have to do that anymore because of this. Something really interesting I can show you here. I know that this second tab works for me. So if I open up tab two to tab one, the pink tab, I know that this works really good for me. So I'm gonna leave this open and I'm gonna put in a cutting plate here. Now this here, this is a rubber pad and this is gonna help us emboss. Now this is a Spellbinders one, but I also know that Sizzix sells them as well and I think a few other companies. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this with our die cutting machine and our dies, but we're gonna emboss with our dies. So I've got this open to one, I've got my cutting plate there. Now I'm going to put my rubber mat down here and I'm going to put a piece of paper down. And now this die here, this is a Simon Says stamp die, really like this die. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on here and we're, we're not gonna cut it. We're gonna emboss the die into the paper. And we're gonna put that plate, that second plate on top and we're gonna run it through like this. Again, check your machine. Your machine might not need this much pressure. Yours might be fine with it open all the way. So be sure to check your sandwich out. Don't push anything through the machine that is too tight. But as you can see here, now it hasn't been cut, but it's been embossed. And that's pretty cool that now all our dies can be used as literally embossing folders, if you will, and really like how that looks. I've even seen some videos where people will ink this up and it almost letter presses into the paper. So this is probably five to seven dollars I would say and this is really a worthwhile investment just so that you can basically use your dies. And I know that on the Spellbinders machine you need this in order to emboss the dies that they make. 
but now with any company you can emboss the dies by basically using this and having your machine set up the right way in order to do that. Let's say that I want to buy an extremely detailed die and I put it through my machine and it doesn't cut well and this happens a lot with doilies uh, very fancy hearts. There are so many dies on the market that are really really fancy. I'm going to give you a few tips here on how to help die cut very detailed dies. For one, my first suggestion would be buy a metal shim. Now this one is from a company I bought several years ago, but I know that Memory Box sells them spell binders. I would assume Sizzix would have something like this. This goes under your plate. So you would have your platform and then your metal shim and then your plate. And this is going to provide hard extra pressure up onto your cutting die. Now, when I roll through something pretty fancy, and I guess this isn't my fanciest die, but you will see that it cuts it a lot easier than if I didn't have that metal shim. Now, it's got everything cut, which I can see it's cut everything nice, and this is where another tip is going to come in. This is the Sizzix tool. Now I know Spellbinders has one. I think there might be a couple other companies that make this and basically what you do is you roll this on and as you can see the little white pieces are falling and out of this die and it just makes it easier to be able to get those little pieces out of the die a little bit more easier. And I'm just going to grab my little craft pick here and now look how perfectly that came out and there's a lot of cutting going on in this little stretch and because of this metal shim it really really helped pretty much all the time I have this metal shim in here the only time I really take it out is if I don't want too much pressure on the paper that I'm dying but I really like to use it almost all the time because my cuts are really good then and again love this tool uh, this is the Sizzix one I did a review maybe I'll put the link down below about this really love this tool it works pretty good I would say it's not a hundred percent but I don't think anything is and that's where this tool here this is a craft pick this is the Tim Holtz one this is through Sizzix I even have the blue one that's a straight Sizzix one I really like this because then if you've missed anything you can kind of poke out the pieces of paper that way so these are really good tools these two here will help you a lot and again really like this rubber piece this rubber embossing mat this is definitely worth the money these four things are really helpful when it comes to die cutting and embossing again that's the metal shim the craft pick the Sizzix cleaning tool and the embossing mat so that's it for my what's in my stash video today. A lot I know to talk about with the die cutting machine, but honestly I had someone who wanted to get into crafting and they're like, what do you think I should buy? And I'm like, if you're really into it, I love my die cutting machine and basically it is something that I use all the time and I highly recommend to people because there is so much versatility in this machine. You can do dies and embossing. You can do the big dies. I mean, there's the texture blade. There's so many things that these machines do. And I love my dies. I've had this die. This is a my favorite thing die. I've had this die for a long time and I still use it. And some of my very first dies from Spellbinders, I still have them all because I use them all the time. So I want to thank you for joining me for this video. You can check me out on my website at kellyscards.ca. You can subscribe for more videos and I hope everyone has a wonderful day.